In the Bee Guardian method, we harvest the majority of the honey in the spring after the first year, thus leaving the bees ample honey to survive on over the winter. But if the colony is highly productive in that first summer, it may become necessary to remove single combs intermittently during the summer months. You will need to chart the bees' progress through the top bar window. As the months go by, watch the bees building out the combs, progressing towards the back of the hive. You will want to be sure that they do not build out a full comb on the last top bar at the back of the hive. If this happens, you will have no way of accessing the last comb and detaching it from the sides. The bees will also attach this last comb to the false back, making it very difficult to remove the comb. When the bees begin drawing out a comb on that last bar, it is time to make a single comb harvest. Each comb in the top bar hive is attached with wax to the sides of the hive. This is called brace comb, and it is how the bees ensure the stability of the combs. Because of this brace comb, we cannot just take out any comb in the middle of the hive because it is very delicate and may tear. If your top bar hive has a window, different kinds of combs can easily be identified by the amount of brace comb attached to the window. The brood comb will have much smaller brace comb attachments than the heavy honey combs. This is one of the ways you can tell where the brood nest is located versus where the honey is stored. To begin the single comb harvest, gently create a slight opening between the false back and the very last comb at the back of the hive. Allow the fresh air to inform the bees that you have arrived to assist them. This will get them gradually acclimated to the new air and brilliant sunlight, and taking these steps will help the bees remain calm and cooperative. Next, remove the partial comb at the back of the hive and set it aside. Now you can clearly see the next comb. This comb is attached to the sides of the hive with brace comb. You will want to use the hive tool to detach this brace comb from the sides of the hive. This is done by sliding the tool in between the comb and the sides of the hive. We can lightly touch the bees with the tool and usually the bees will move out of the way, clearing a path for you to slide the hive tool along the see sides of the hive. Come to it? Yeah, they bust around it like it's a intruder. When the brace comb has been detached from the sides of the hive, we will gently pry the top bar from the top of the hive. The bar will be held in place with propolis and may need a bit of steady force. Once the bar seems free, we will do a test by gently sliding the bar back and watching to see if the comb is coming with the bar. If the comb seems to be tilting at an angle or there appears to be some resistance, stop, check the perimeter of the comb, and loosen any unseen attachments. Mm -hmm. This second comb will most likely be filled with nectar, but not capped. Mm -hmm. We will proceed until we find comb that is at least three-quarter mm -hmm. capped honeycomb. Uncapped nectar is only partway through its evolution to becoming honey, and is not quite honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will continue towards the front of the hive, loosening the brace comb on the next bar and moving it back, until we reach a comb that is at least three-quarter capped honeycomb. This works much like moving files in a filing cabinet. A light, bouncing motion gently alerts the bees to clear out of the way. This comb is still not three-quarters honeycomb. The smooth white cells at the top are capped, and the uncapped cells are at the bottom. When all the bees are clear, then the bar can be pushed fully back. When you have selected a potentially harvestable comb, you will want to set it aside. A milk crate works great for temporarily holding combs while you decide which combs you want to harvest. Like that. Nice. Our backyard hive fetcher also works well for setting aside selected combs. Here, 
The bees are left on the comb during this process to avoid large numbers of brushed bees flying about. The fetcher has the added feature of protecting these bees from the sun's light and heat. When you have decided which combs to harvest, gently brush the bees back into the hive. Always allow the combs to hang vertically from the bar. If the bars become tilted, this could happen. Honeycombs are quite delicate, so go slowly and methodically. The hive should never be worked on in the heat of the day. The best time to work the hive is in the morning after the foraging bees have left for the fields. It helps to invite a partner to help brush the bees. You can also use a fun specialized tool we created called the bee herder. Herding the bees rather than brushing the bees reduces the number of bees flying in the air. This animation will demonstrate where a fully capped and harvestable comb will most likely be located. Usually there will be uncapped combs at the back of the hive that are not yet ready to be harvested. These are returned to the hive. Continue forward in the hive until you reach the first fully capped honeycomb. This is the comb that you will want to harvest. The other combs will be left for the bees to overwinter on, and most likely you will be able to harvest them in the spring. Slide the remaining combs forward before replacing the false back. After you have harvested the comb, you will return the empty top bar to the last position in the hive, directly in front of the false back. You now have successfully kept the bees from attaching comb to the very back of the hive, or to the false back. After a few weeks, it may be necessary to perform the single comb harvest again, which you will do in exactly the same way. <laughs>